Do you have a stack of these at home? If you do, I bet you have a grandmother that knits. Those are the best washcloth I have in my house and I have a ton of them. And today I'll show you how to make one yourself because it is actually one of the best projects to learn how to knit. It is small, it uses simple techniques and it is cheap to make. You'll learn how to cast on, knit, increase and decrease and bind off in less than 20 minutes. To make your dishcloth, you're going to need obviously some yarn. Mine is a 100% cotton. It's the Lily Sugar and Cream, but you can get any worsted weight dish cotton that you can find. It is very inexpensive, which is great for a first project. You only need one ball that is 50 grams to make a dishcloth. Then you're going to need needles. Um, you can have those uh, long needles. Those are just straight needles, but I personally prefer circular needles. They're more ergonomic and you also can use them to knit in the round later. So I prefer those, but if you have those, it is perfect. And you're going to need them in a size four and a half millimeters, which is a US size seven. And then you're going to need obviously a pair of scissors and a darning needle in order to weave in your end at the end. Let's start. There are about a million ways to cast on a project, but I will use my favorite one, which is the long tail cast on. If you want a more in-depth video, I have one right here. So what you're gonna do is take the yarn. You're gonna give yourself a little bit of a tail, just long enough so you can weave it in later. You're gonna put that tail over your thumb and the other bit of the yarn is gonna go over your pointer finger and then you're going to take those two strands in your hand, like so. You're going to take your needle, put it on top, rotate it towards you, and put your finger on it to keep it in place. And we're going to cast on three more stitches. So this one counts as one stitch. And then you're going to go towards you, still holding this bit here. You're going to pick up the yarn that's on your thumb. You're going to go back, pick up the strand that's on your index finger, go through, let go of the thumb and pull. One more time towards you, pick up the yarn from your thumb, go back over the yarn pick it up and bring it through that big loop we created and pull. And one last time towards you, the thumb yarn, go back, pick, and then through the hole, let go and pull. And you should have four stitches on your needles and a little bit of an end here watch this section as many times as you need to you can go back and you can even slow down the video so now we're going to turn our work so the left hand needle is pointing to the right and we're going to start knitting so our first um, row is only knit stitches we're gonna bring our needle into the stitch we're going to take the yarn here and we're just going to loop it around from the back to the front and bring that strand to the front. See how my needles stay in an X, always touching, and we're going to take it off the needle. Again, we're going to poke through like so. To go around we're gonna bring slowly the needle through to the front and take it off the needle one more time through go around bring the needle forward and take it off if you notice once I go through, my two needles always stay 
connected. So they touch each other the whole time and off. So we finished our first row. We're going to turn this around. And now we're going to keep using that knit stitch. We're just going to have one more thing to do starting now at the beginning of each row. We're going to do two knit stitches. So through, around, bring it back and off the needle, through, around, bring it forward, off the needle. Now we need to make a, what we call a yarn over. My yarn is in the back. I'm going to bring it in between the two needles to the front and I'm going to leave it there and then do my two last knit stitches. And what's going to happen is right here we created this little extra stitch with a little hole underneath that's called a yarn over and it's a way to increase. And then the last stitch is here. Here, around, bring it to the front, and off. We're going to turn our work. So we're always starting with the left-hand needle is the one that has the stitches. The right-hand needle doesn't have any stitches. And we're going to repeat the same row until we have as many stitches as we want for the width or the diagonal of our dishcloth. The yarn is here. It's pointing down. It's not over my needle. It's right down here. It's in the back. It's waiting for me. I'm going to go through, go around, through, and off. Through, around, come back in the front, and off. Now we got to do our yarn over, so we're going to bring the stitch, the, the yarn in the front in between my two needles. And then this is a weird stitch, it's the yarn over from the row before. We're still going to do the same thing, we're going to go through, we're going to knit it, Come back in the front and take it off. Through, around, come back to the front and take it off. Through, around, come back to the front and take it off. And I'm going to do that again and again and again. I'm going to show another way to hold the yarn. And that's where you get to decide which way is more comfortable to you. There are many ways to knit. They're all valid. They all work very well. It's just a matter of preference. So I was showing before how to hold in my right hand. I'm going to show now how to hold in my left hand. It's called continental knitting, whereas the one in the right is English knitting. So I'm going to poke. And instead of using my hand to wrap the yarn around. I'm going to use my right hand needle to go pick up or scoop the yarn and bring it to the front. Again, I go through. That's the same. I go pick up the yarn and I bring it to the front and off the needle. Now I need to do that yarn over. So I'm going to bring the yarn in front by just looping it around. Now I can keep going through, pick the yarn and guide it in front. That's my yarn over hole. That's perfect. I go through, I go pick the yarn and bring it in front and let go. Here. And here. One more time with the continental knitting. My yarn is always in the back. 
coming from underneath through around and sometimes with the first stitch I have to kind of help the, the yarn with my right pointer and off through here bring it forward and off oops I forgot to do my yarn over here so I can go back in order to go back I'm gonna locate the hole underneath my row of stitches on my needle and I'm gonna poke my left hand needle into that hole and take it off the right needle and pull so now I have two stitches it's time to do my yarn over my yarn goes in between the two stitches from the back to the front here we go here through off here through off go through off let's go back to English style for a little bit and then you can decide what you prefer so you can hold it like this with your fingers around in front drop here around bring it to the front off in between our two stitches for the yarn over and keep going you might decide that you like having the yarn wrapped around one or two of your fingers in order to have the yarn lay on your pointer like this and then you can go wrap without having to hold it in a pinching way if you're learning something today please leave a little comment or give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel i'll have many more videos to come that will talk about knitting techniques about essential things you should know if you want to get better at knitting i will see you when we have finished increasing to the width that we want our dishcloth I'm back with 40 stitches on my needle and the washcloth is gonna go this way. So I feel like this is a great size for my washcloth. And now I'm gonna have to start decreasing. So in order to decrease while at the same time keeping this beautiful detail on the side, uh, I'm gonna still do my yarn over, which is my increase, but I'm gonna do two decrease. Uh, to compensate so here's how we're gonna do I'm gonna start with the English style I'm gonna knit one stitch by now you're familiar with that stitch and then I'm gonna knit those two stitches together so in order to do that I'm gonna knit it I'm gonna go underneath the second stitch and I'm gonna go through both stitches and then I'm gonna knit it the same way I knit all my other stitches so here I have two stitches that became one and that's a decrease then i'm gonna do my yarn over so minus one plus one equals zero i still have to decrease if i want to finish my square so i'm going to do another knit two together here so two stitches together and knit them and then i'm going to keep knitting until the end of the row and i'm simply going to repeat that row on the next row, I, I'll do the knit two together continental style. So my yarn is in the back here. I'm going to knit my first stitch. I'm going to go through both stitches, go get the yarn. And sometimes I have to help myself with my middle finger. Go around for a yarn over. So through around the needle and knit two together again 
like I said, sometimes helping me with this, with this finger helps. Make sure you catch both stitches and knit to the end of the row. Repeat this row until you have four stitches and then we'll meet you back there for our bind off. I'm almost done with my decrease. I stopped when I have five stitches instead of four because what I'm gonna do now to match the first row where I didn't have any yarn over is that I'm basically going to knit one, knit two together, and then knit to the end. So I'm taking away the whole yarn over and a second knit two together. Now I have four stitches on my needles. I'm going to turn my work around and I'm going to bind off. And you'll see that the bind off is not more complicated than what we've been doing since the beginning. We're going to knit one, knit a second stitch, and then with the point of the left hand needle, I'm going to go grab the first stitch I knit and I'm going to pass it over the one that was the closest to the tip. Again, I'm going to knit now just one because I already have one on my needle. And then I'm going to grab this one and pass it over. Same thing if I'm doing continental style. I'm going to, I have already one here. I'm going to knit this last one. I'm going to come and grab the stitch and pull it over and now I'm going to pull a bit to have my loop be very loose so it doesn't fall. I'm going to cut the yarn with a little bit of a tail so I can weave it in. I'm simply going to pass that tail in the loop and pull. And here we have our first dishcloth and now the only thing that's left to do in order to make it look professional is to take our yarn needle our darning needle pass the first so we have two ends to weave in right the first the end and the beginning and all I'm gonna do is try and find an area that is similar of a similar color if I have a you know different color so it doesn't show as much but I'm basically going to try and hide it it doesn't really matter where the most important thing is to kind of do it in a few different places so I'm going to go under some loops here pull it through pull on it a little bit obviously it is a dishcloth it is not the end of the world if we can see the darning a little and I'm gonna try and go in and out of some areas like this don't worry too much about where you're going just make sure to go in a few different areas and sometimes I come back on myself and sometimes I like to split the yarn here so it can really hold on to itself and then we're pretty sure it's not going to go away and I'm going to cut that part not too too close so it doesn't come undone same thing here and here you go your first dishcloth you can put it in the wash in the dryer it will withstand a lot of things and uh, I hope you enjoyed knitting with me if you'd like to see more knitting content you can click right here to see my top tools for knitting. Happy knitting!